I was modeling this nice little operator's cab when I realized there was a problem. What if you're in here and it's sunny outside? You're gonna get the sun in your eyes and that is no fun. This is a kind of little cab you stick on a big machine for the operator to sit in and like control it. it goes on a buck wheel excavator or something like that. But in this case, you're gonna get the sun in your eyes and that's no good. So what's the solution? The solution is sunshades. They look like this and they're made of cut out corrugated metal and they're very crude some guy just climbed on here and bolted them on with bits of angle iron and corrugated bits he cut out of some scrap an angle grinder so that'll make it pretty easy for us to make there's nothing extremely complicated about it and we don't have to be super exact since whoever installed them clearly wasn't either Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how to make these, and they're really easy. And they're a great way to adorn any kind of windows or, like, windshields where people are going to be looking out and working and don't want the sun in their eyes. First thing to make is a piece of corrugated metal. Don't need the cube. Start with a plane. And the trick is make it long and thin. Um, roughly like that'll work can always stretch it out again later or duplicate the piece so this will be a great piece to work with and hit control R and over it until you see the yellow line scroll to make a bunch of loops this is going to be the shape of the corrugations I guess all the bumps and try that see that was 75 loops now just Switch to edge mode, top view, I'm going to drag across all these so I've only selected the edges in the middle. I have not selected these little ones on the end, just the middle ones. Now go to select and checker deselect. That'll just select every other one and that's what you need to make bumps. Just GZ, move them upward and you've got a million different squiggles and you can make them softer or stronger, probably somewhere in between would be best. Okay, and that looks a little bit too tight together for my liking, so I'm just going to scale the whole thing on the y-axis like that. A little further. Oh, yeah. Okay, now drag over it to select all those edges again, and I think I learned this trick from an Ian Hubert tutorial. You can bevel these, and then you'll get much smoother bumps. Do like two or three. Okay, you press Control B to bevel, and then you scroll to adjust the number of cu of cuts or faces it's making. Uh, right in there, I like that. Okay, now you've got the general metal shape. Right-click, shade auto smooth to smooth anything out. Um, that didn't do enough. We'll just if it's still got straight lines on it, then you need to go into mesh properties, uh, normals, and turn up this. There you go. Next, it needs thickness, so add a solidify modifier to make that easy, and that's probably enough thickness right there. This metal is actually really thin if you've ever seen a piece of it. Okay, now for some randomness. Whoever did this, it was a scrap, they cut it off, so, and they didn't want sharp corners for some reason, so go back into edit mode, hit A to select everything, then go to mesh, and pick bisect. This gives you a great tool to just chop the corners off. Click and drag and you get this line and it's gonna like laser a line wherever you point it so you can see it's going across there I'm gonna go right here and lop this corner off and now I'll go to vertex select just select um, these extra ones right up to here that one that one all right and then you just hit X and delete those Looks like I deleted one I should not have deleted. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, see, now it's got a nice cut off corner. Looks realistic. Like someone cut it off with an angle grinder or something like that. And I'll do the same thing over on this side. Oh, gotta select stuff before you can bisect. You have to select, hit A to select everything before you use the bisect tool, otherwise it does not work. And I'm going to cut off this corner at a worse angle. 
and you can just select I'll select this one this is the first one I need to delete and then you just hold down control select that one and it selects the shortest path to the one you selected so that was just straight delete and now we have got a piece of metal that is looking good and next step is a bracket to hang it on so for that we'll grab a plane okay and the bracket will be made out of just angle iron pieces so it's gonna be super simple to make I'll just squash the whole plane on the y-axis like that and then grab one side extrude it down to make the angle shape and we'll give this piece a solidify modifier solidify. and check even thickness that means it won't have otherwise this part will be really thin see turn up the thickness a bit this is thick thicker metal not super thick okay and let's put it down at one end to support our roof And we want the whole thing to be kind of tilted because this is a sunshade. It makes sense to tilt that a little bit over a window, I think. I'll just select both and rotate them down like that. And they probably didn't cut the angle iron to the exact length needed, so just select this end and move it in a little bit. So it's not sticking out. Or you leave it sticking out, either way. And then, let's see, we need another piece for this to be attached to, so duplicate it. Actually, I'm going to use Option D. And no, I'll just duplicate it. And we're going to be able to attach it to the wall, so we'll put it this way. Be right there. Okay, so like you could bolt that to that, you could bolt that to the wall, you could bolt that to the metal. And we're going to need a support here, I think. That's probably not very strong. So duplicate one more time. Scale it on the Z, get a shorter piece, and uh, I'm going to rotate around this way. Mm, no, leave it like that. Okay, and this one's actually going to be tilted a little bit since this end is further in. So you know we've got a space on this end. I'm going to go into wireframe mode, and you can see there's an angle iron the metal. So it's a bit delicate trying to make it look right. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you only have to do this part once because then you can just duplicate the bracket, so you might as well do it well. Okay, I'm just going to move it up. So it touches there. Now we've got room for our bolts. Okay, let's make some bolts. Bolts are easy. That is just a cylinder. Um, I'm going to make mine super low poly since I'm probably never going to look at it up close. We extrude one end and scale it. It is now a bolt. Scale the whole thing down. Actually, let's make it double sided so it can poke through. It's small now, and it's still way too big to be a bolt, and something is also wrong with it. I duplicate it. I have no idea what I did. Made auto smooth, shade smooth. Did not fix it. Merge by distance. Did not fix it. Okay, well, hopefully yours didn't glitch like that. Oh, did something up here. I have no idea how I did that. I have to undo that. One moment. We'll delete the ends. Ah, 
That's all one face. I like that face. Okay, whatever I did, don't do it. This is the bolt now. I'm gonna scale the whole thing so it's like that. Stretch it a bit. And we will position it. I'm not gonna do the bolts through the roof here. Oh, maybe I should. Move that up just like that. Okay, I'll do the roof bolts. I'll go right here. And these bolts actually aren't very thick. I don't think they would use huge ones. And the reason I'm not putting a lot of work into this is it's more just to visually your mind will register. If you see little dots on something, you'll think, oh, those are bolts. So I don't have to actually model the bolt. I can just stick a cylinder there and your mind will think from back here, it'll be like, oh, bolts. Okay, next, I'm just gonna duplicate this, except I'm gonna use Option D or Alt D, which means it'll be a link duplicate, so it's still the same object, it's just another instance of it, which is really handy for some things. Okay, put one there. Okay, so now these are all the same object, they're just different instances, which means if we update the mesh, or I like to have an Edwin on this one and move part of it, it's gonna happen to all of them. So we can quickly update them all, or texture them all, or give them all materials as needed. Option D. Rotate. Okay, just one there. Whoever made this wasn't doing their best work ever, but it doesn't need to be that strong. They don't have high wind in wherever this is, so they didn't have to worry about it too much. Of course, maybe they did have high wind, and that's why they built this. They're replacing an older one. One there. And then we need some against the back wall. I think I did the wrong kind of duplicate there. Option D. Option D. And since I just did Option D and then moved it, I can now just press Shift R and do the same thing over and over again when I have a row of bolts. For some reason they decided to do more bolts when they were attaching it. Okay, and now that bracket is complete. You can see we've got a nice sunshade supported by a bracket. So we'll texture this model, join it all together, and then we can add some more brackets. Let's give ourselves a wall to stick this on. And texture will be very simple. You'll just use any picture of some metal. It would work just fine. And slide this out a little bit so it's not intersecting the wall because they wouldn't be able to stick it in to the wall they would just stick it up as far as they could all right that is looking quite nice okay now let's give this some materials i'm gonna give everything uh, the same material Okay, next is materials. Just give everything the same material and then we will texture everything with different parts of an image. Got a material in here with a big image texture. It's just a bunch of images I've stuck together. Access.
and just go to okay I'm in material preview mode you can hit Z and pick material preview and hide that right there okay I will unwrap this base Okay, there's our wall that we're putting it on. It doesn't make sense to have a sunshade on a blink wall, but it's better than on nothing. And then this, just hit A, U, unwrap. On a flat, straight view of it. And we'll find a spot for it down here. I've got some corrugated material here for this kind of thing. And the bumps here don't line up with the bumps there, but as you can see, it looks just fine. Or at least good enough. Okay, and then for the bracket. Just gonna unwrap all of the pieces and put them I'll put them right here. It would make sense. They painted all the same color. And the bracket's in here, so it's been sheltered. It didn't get beat up like that. And then the screws, the bolts. I'm not sure if I duplicated them all properly, but let's see. I'm going to try unwrapping that. I don't super care what it goes on, just something darker. Scale it down tiny. Put it in here. Did that get all of them? Didn't get that one. No. Those. Not duplicate them all properly, but that got the rest, I think. All right, now we can join all together. So we'll grab all of the bolts painstakingly one at a time. That one, that one, and all the angles, and then. got this piece, I'll go back over here, we can place it multiple times. Option D, Y, the one in the middle. And make sure you line up the bolts in a place where they go through, because if you're going like right here, they won't go through. Pick a low point right there. And you don't want the middle to stick through, just the bolts. And one here. Okay, now it has brackets, and this is still too perfect. So what we do now is just go to vertex select mode, grab a vertex on both ends, turn proportional editing with press O or click this little button, and then just do G, Z to move it down, scroll, move more or less. It's like right in here, it's kind of sagged. I don't know if this metal actually does that, but it looks cool, because it adds randomness. It's been up here for a few years maybe, and it's getting kind of beat up. Maybe like hail damage, or maybe it is windy here. Okay, and then another thing you can mess up is grab some edges here, like, and mess up the smoothness of it. 
because it's a little too perfect. If someone just went and cut it, it probably wouldn't be quite so straight. Okay, I like that. And that's it. You've just made a lovely little sun awning. See? It's keeping the shade off. I'm just keeping the sun off already. And these look great in cycles, not Eevee. It's making a nice spot of shade on your model. So, this is how you can keep the sun out of your driver's eyes. If you've got anything where you need sun out of someone's eyes and they might build stuff out of cheap metal or scraps, then here is your solution. And you can use corrugated metal like this for a lot of other things. I have not found a lot of other uses yet, but I'm guessing that I will over the course of my next projects find a lot of uses for metal like that. 